Good morning. Today is the first day of week five. That number's gonna get crazier every time. I need to get used to it. I stayed at Bald Mountain Shelter last night after my longest day yet. Today I am doing, in comparison to yesterday, a quick and easy 17 down to Irwin, Tennessee. Um, I'm gonna go to Uncle Johnny's hostel and try and get a bunk. I texted yesterday and then again today to try and secure the bunk because I hear that they tend to book up. So fingers crossed on that one. Um, and I also need to resupply. I'm not gonna take a zero. I'm just gonna kind of stop in, stay the night, warm up, and then head out in the morning. It got pretty chilly last night. I think it got down to about 30. And then there was wind chill and the way that the wind was blowing, it was actually kind of coming into the shelter. So it was going like down into our sleeping bags, which made for an extra cold night. So um, I didn't delay her at all this morning. Also partially because I know that the hike today is almost entirely downhill. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be working as hard um, and warming up as fast. That said, the high today is like 60 degrees, so it is gonna warm up, but for now, it's chilly. So, staying bundled oh, and taking it easy because yesterday was big. <laughs> and I'm really proud of myself. It was really nice to get to the shelter and have people go, You're here and you made it and all that stuff. So, it's just really nice to have friends out here um, and people who are just as excited as I am that I made it all 25.6 miles. <laughs> so, uh, I'm telling you, it's the community <clears throat> that really <laughs> makes the Appalachian Trail what it is. So, looking ahead at a good day and starting the fifth week on a strong note. actually pretty muddy today but it's so cold this morning that it's frozen I don't mind that I'll take frozen mud any day mud is slippery that's a black-throated green warbler singing and there's a woodpecker in the distance little balls of moss. This looks like a little fairy pond. Any fishies? Salamanders? Probably. The most common piece of trail trash that I have found is corners of wrappers. Things not to do again. Put off de-layering because I don't wanna take off my backpack until lunch. It is currently 60 degrees and I'm still wearing my merino base layers. Dumb mistake.
Hello, Irwin. Headed down. <laughs> yeah, those uh, those uphills, man. Good morning. Last night we stayed at Uncle Johnny's uh, in Irwin, Tennessee, and we popped into town only briefly to do some resupply and for me to um, eat a lot of McDonald's food. And um, Uncle Johnny's was great. I had a package there waiting for me from my sweet friend Kelsey, who definitely delivered on the sweets that I requested. So thank you, Kelsey. Um, this morning, we pretty immediately crossed the Nolichucky River and then the train tracks and are on an incline for most of our day today, which is fine. This next stretch is the stretch between Uncle Johnny's and Boots Off Hostel, which is over in Hampton, Tennessee by Lake Watauga. So that'll take us about four days to get over to. But for now, I am learning as I go and I got myself some vegetables yesterday from the grocery store. So I had an avocado last night and I have a bag salad for lunch today. And I'm pretty excited about that. Do we still get trail magic? Yes, you do. Oh the, first, the first year, no one from Alabama, absolutely no one. Can look in a second. There's Irwin down there. Hey everybody. I am up here on Beauty Spot outside of Irwin, Tennessee. It's a pretty um, tough but beautiful climb to get up here. Um, I still have some more climbing to do today, but I thought I would sit for a moment because I wanted to both share something I was ready to share Sorry, Lynn. Uh, as well as talk out something um, I think verbalizing it might help myself with my processing and help me find clarity and direction for moving forward. I have been really struggling with something internally since about um, Franklin, North Carolina I would say so over 200 miles ago now um, and that is feelings of loneliness and isolation. The Appalachian Trail has a huge community base and I talk about it pretty regularly about how happy I am to have the community out here and the people on trail really make the trail what it is. And it is easy to feel disconnected. A lot of connections get made out here that are for lack of a better word, um, on the lighter side. And deep connections and deep conversations and true connectivity is actually rarer than I was expecting to find. That said, I did find it with that first group of folks that I was hiking with, the Turtle Crew, if you guys remember me. Hiking with them during week one and part of week two um, I definitely had that with that crew. And since Franklin, I have really struggled with feeling alone out here. Um, if you remember in Franklin, I had already left that group. So I was pretty well hiking alone and have been since then. There have been people that have come and gone, body shop, chestnut and poppy and honey have all been kind of... Um, continual figures that I have hiked with and connected with um, and I have not 
had the fortune of being able to hold on to those as hiking partners for long stretches of time. So I've been struggling with this for a long time. Um, and until this week, I didn't really know exactly what it was that was bothering me and what was kind of not setting well inside. Um, and this week I identified it as loneliness and isolation and it really makes a lot of sense. And just figuring out what exactly that underlying issue was has provided me with a lot of clarity um, and a lot of help this week. I do think for full transparency, that was one of the things I was really struggling with last week after I left Hot Springs. When I came into Hot Springs, my family came out, Seth came out, and that was so wonderful. And for about 36 hours, I had tangibly in my hands and around me, supporting me, my support system. And it was incredible. And saying goodbye to that and walking away from it in Hot Springs and being literally and figuratively alone on the trail for a crappy day of hiking, <laughs> just painfully showed me and made me feel alone out here. And I feel like that's something that doesn't often get talked about because, you know, tramleys get formed and it's easy to talk about all the fun we're having and the beautiful views and feeling great and idyllic. And there's a lot that happens in the in-between while you're trudging along a dirt path in the middle of the woods with no one around you. And so I wanted to talk about one of those things that has really been bothering me, which is this loneliness um, and feeling like the folks around me don't know me, which is hard to stomach um, being over 300 miles into this journey. And something that that is ultimately showing me is that the Appalachian Trail for me is way more community based than I expected. And that's just something that I think everybody has a different interaction with. Some people love the solitude out here. Some people prefer it. Some people don't want to hike alone a day on trail. Some people are somewhere in the middle. And while I do think I am somewhere in the middle, ultimately, I do have a strong desire to have my people around me on trail. And I feel like I left them in week two. And that has been something really hard for me to stomach and deal with. The last week or so, I have really been thinking about the options I have on trail to wait for them. They are only two to three days behind me, which in the grand scheme of things is not much. I can continue going solo. And if I continue to go solo, I may also find a tramley further north. That is very much a possibility. And I believe that what I have landed on is that it is worth it to me to wait for them and to reconnect with the people that I felt deep and easy connection with. And at the same time, I wanted to make sure that I gave myself the time to be alone on trail and to grapple with these things and really think through it and have the time to internalize how those feelings are manifesting and how they come out and, and really learn more about myself through the process. So I have very specifically, sorry for the wind, I very specifically not wanted to just stop and wait for them or turn around and run back to them. I have wanted to make sure that I am giving myself the necessary space to learn more about myself through this process and figure out what exactly it was that was bothering me. And I have. <laughs> so I don't have an answer here. I just wanted to take a moment, sit still, share and also verbalize it for myself because that helps me process what I have been feeling internally and let you guys in on a little bit of something that as a through hiker or as a section hiker, anyone who's out here may be grappling with because a lot of really big issues come up inside while you're out here hiking. And this has been 
so far on trail the biggest one for me and um, one that I'm really happy to have had the opportunity to confront within myself. Today's walk has been serenaded by dandelions, wild violets, and Virginia spring beauties. The shade of green doesn't really show up in this video, but this is such a cool section of forest. The bottom three feet of the trees are just covered in green moss. So cool. Forest is really starting to look green. Lots of trout lilies and bleeding hearts and Dutchman's breeches through here and trilliums. Good morning. Today we started walking at 5 a.m. So good bit of night hiking this morning. I've been watching the sky wake up and the birds start to sing. There wasn't a huge and dramatic sunrise this morning, but it's just really nice to be up and present while the forest is waking up. So it's been really nice and peaceful this morning. Today's big thing is that we're headed up and over the Rhone Highlands, and then we will continue on down the other side for camp tonight. It'll be just shy of 23 miles. And yeah, that's the plan. Alright, I just finished the absolutely grueling climb up um, to Roan Mountain, or Roan High Knob Shelter. It is the highest elevation shelter, I'm quite sure, on the AT. Pretty cool, it was like cabin style. Um, the climb was insane, it was uh, over 2,000 feet of elevation gain in about 5 miles. Um, with lots of stairs, and that's what takes it out of me. In the words of my sweet friend, Honey, that climb was disgusting. <laughs> um, definitely a tough day. My legs are super feeling it. I didn't really want to spend the night at such high elevation, um, especially in the springtime when uh, we're still watching the lows every night very carefully. Um, the lower in elevation... I can go the warmer the temperatures will be that night. So um, moving on, not staying at the highest shelter, I'm going to go to the next one, which is about five miles, mostly down uh, to get there. So I have plenty of time. Just going to be careful. This section of trail is pretty rocky. I'm also not sure at what point the Rowan Highlands themselves that I have seen plenty a picture and video of uh, will begin. I did that whole climb and I kind of thought that the shelter would be at those like rolling vista views that I've seen uh, and I haven't seen any of that yet. <laughs> so I don't know if it's between here and the shelter or if it'll be tomorrow but I still haven't really gotten to the islands yet but I did the climb.
found their own highlands. So I just got to the Stan Murray shelter and for the first time on the Appalachian Trail, no one is here. So uh, maybe I'll be here alone tonight, um, but also it's only five, so people could still show up very easily, but not too mad about not having people snoring in the shelter with me. Good morning. I slept so hard last night. <laughs> it's about 7.15 and I still haven't gotten up. <laughs> I have about 20 miles to do today, <clears throat> which will be fine. Oh, but I am moving slow. In the shelters, someone keeps putting stickers that look like outfits on the wall. And I find that hilarious. I have hit this section of trail and it is just fields of ramps. Talk about foraging season. Holy cow. Now this, blue, blue skies, hot sun, grassy fields. This feels like summer right here. <sighs> so I am just hiking along on my merry way and forgot this was coming today. 400 miles on the AT. <laughs> Um, it's weird to think that halfway to here I was up top of Klingman's. That feels simultaneously so long ago and also like it was last week. So, <laughs> crazy! 400 miles! Pumped! Some beefcake.
Good morning. Kind of, I'm a little bit later making this video than I normally do it. Today is a good day. We had a lot of rain overnight, which I think was supposed to originally hit today, but it came early, which is great because I love sleeping to the sound of rain, um, especially in a shelter. And um, all the water sources are flowing today, which is really cool. And there's a lot of water sources today also, lots of crossings. So beautiful day, great night's sleep. Um, today I am doing 17.8 to Laurel Fork Falls Shelter, or maybe just Laurel Fork Shelter. Um, so basically this week's progression was lots of mileage and then slowly less mileage as the week went on. So today feels relatively easy and it is setting me up for a super easy day tomorrow into Hampton, Tennessee. So um, also today's elevation is wildly mild. So it's gonna be a fast and easy day, I think. And I am very excited for that. I am not sure if you guys can see this on the video, but there is a very big and dark cloud over there and it is growling with thunder and heading this way. I have a little over five miles to go to the shelter and I am hightailing it. I am just racing a cloud right now. Good morning. Today I did a little bit of night hiking. Um, I left at like 6 a.m. from the shelter just because I wanted to get an early start and get to town sooner. Um, all that is in my hike today is 6.7 miles and I followed the riverbed from the Laurel Fork River which makes the Laurel Falls and then I have been climbing a mountain and this one mountain is just it looks like a cone on the on the elevation map and it is almost 2,000 feet of elevation gain so <laughs> it's it's quite a doozy first thing in the morning I think I'm about halfway up it but I still have a lot of climbing to do but headed to Hampton today I will connect with um my mom and my boyfriend again and potentially my grandparents and some other family we'll just kind of see who had the availability to come out but <clears throat> taking a nero today and then a zero tomorrow basically the same thing i did in hot springs so i think it's going to be a good day Did say there was restrooms up here, didn't we? 